Hi, my name is Jennifer. I am coming to speak to you about my journey with polycystic ovarian syndrome. I'm doing, doing this through the nonprofit organization for the POPS Challenge, PCOS Challenge. So, um, okay, I clearly have PCOS. So, I was 15. I was a sophomore in high school when I was diagnosed, which was extremely hard because, you know, high school, the beginning with was a very hard journey, but being diagnosed with a health, health condition is even harder. So, I was started to realize things were wrong. I had a normal hair growth. I wasn't feeling right. I just didn't feel like myself for a really long time. So I finally decided it was time to tell my doctor. I'm like, this is cool. So I tell my doctor and um, I basically said to her, I was like, there's something wrong with me. Like there's, I'm not myself lately. You need to see what's going on. So she decided it was time to uh, see the doctor, um, like to start doing tests. And then we were going to go send me to a specialist. So I went to the specialist because clearly the tests were very high and everything was out of whack. So I went to the specialist and she did more tests, which was understandable because clearly they have to do more tests to see what's wrong. So she did more tests and her test found PCOS. And it was very scary to be 15 and being diagnosed with something that you didn't know what it was. So I'm going to tell like the story of basically how it happened. So April 5th, 20, I think 15 it was, I was in my doctor's office and I was going for my visit. This is what, like the visit to basically find out what was wrong with me because we knew something was wrong. So I walk in, me and my mom sit down. The resident comes in, she talks to me. I gave her my laundry list of symptoms, told her how I'm feeling, this and that. Things aren't going so well great, like or great lately. So she understands. She says, okay, so the doctor will be in a couple minutes. So the resident leaves the room and she leaves our door open, like the door that I'm sitting in with the um, exam room and my doctor's office across the hall. So she sits down with my doctor and all of a sudden you hear, she has PCOS. I looked like I looked at my mom. My mom looked at me. I started to turn my head to look in the door, and the president slammed the door into my face. So I was sitting there with my mom in absolute confusion of what PCOS was, what was going on. So I was just watching this lady, and I'm like, okay, this is gonna be super embarrassing when the doctor comes in. So as much as I wanted to grab my phone out and say, what the heck is PCOS, and Google it, I didn't have time to. I was stuck in a jam, and it was time for me to just look at what PCOS is and face my doctor so finally the doctor came in and she said you have PCOS so I started asking her my questions what is it what does it mean and I was only 15 at the time so I asked her am I gonna die from it which clearly is not gonna happen (laughs) but I was very young at the time and I didn't understand what it was so I asked her a silly question um through that whole experience a lot happened um she told me that there's basically no cure which I would like to see a cure in the future Um, I'm hoping to work with people and we will be finding a cure for PCOS because it is horrible. (laughs) Um, And yeah, so from that journey, I actually started to go downhill once my diagnosis happened. um, I started to hate myself. I was very insecure. I would write poems about how insecure I was and how I hated who I was. And the person in front of me in the mirror was the ugliest person ever. And I could never put on a shirt to go to a party or never get dressed because I was going to be ugly no matter what I put on which was a very, very hard stage of my life. I mean, I was in high school at the time too, so it was even worse. And I was trying to battle this all internally and deal with it, which is very difficult. So then finally, I meet with my doctor again. She puts me on medication. Turns out I had a reverse reaction to the medication. So that didn't go well. Um, I had to explain to my doctor like that I had a reverse reaction. I actually ended up hospitalized during my... Um, reverse reaction to the medication which was horrible so I said to my doctor I'm like I'm never going on medication again you don't know what you're doing you're a horrible doctor I didn't say this to her but horrible doctor happened in my head I just told her I was never going back on medication so then finally July came again they did another blood test they realized that my levels were actually increasing so they had to put me on medication so she put me on another dosage and I said deal I'll take the medication so I started the medication in July of 2015 um, I began the medication it was a very rocky journey for me But, well, three months later, um, or like a year later, we'll say, um, I lost 30 pounds. Um, I changed as a person, and my negative attitude started to become positive. And I'm sure losing weight did not help that, like, negativity leave, but I'm sure it was a part of it. And um, I actually began to hang inspirational quotes all over my room to inspire myself and tell myself that I could do anything I put my mind to. So, um... That was, like, my big breakthrough. And I've been on that same medication now. Um, if I don't take the medication, I see a difference, which is very scary. But when I take the medication, I feel great. 
um which is a good thing um yeah no I was like this journey for me was a very hard one um I was never going to share this story with the world until I wrote my high school um my college acceptance essay or like the whatever they call it the college essay thing and I actually wrote about my story and I wrote a metaphor comparing it to a roller coaster ride and a uh, college admissions officer told me that I should share my story with the world because it was really inspiring. And so did a former teacher. So that was when I said, listen, I'm going to share the story now. Here you go. So, yeah, I was like, um, it was very nerve wracking to share my story because it's a big part of me, a big part of the person I am. But I'm glad to be letting it out because it was a very lonely ride for me. So I want other people to not feel alone like I felt during my ride. Um, like the very beginning was very hard because like I didn't tell my family didn't tell my friends I told no one it was literally just me and my mom who knew what was going on and I was trying to cope with it and cope with like ups and downs of everything and it was hard to do on your own so I want everyone to know that you're never alone on your journey Um, through this journey I actually like through my horrible times of self-hate um, you would never know by looking at me I was always smiling always happy which is a little crazy and even crazier, I actually had friends and family members who fully supported me and loved me for who I was, but I just, the problem was me. I didn't love who I was. And um, it was very, very scary. Um, I went through so much in a, such a quick amount of time that I'm forever thankful for where I am now. Um, it's been a success. I just want to, like, say that without my former science teacher from middle school, I probably wouldn't be where I'm standing today. So um, this woman... Uh, knew what was going on because clearly I was very very close to her um and she's my inspiration so I was still spoke to her once I left middle school and I was telling her what was going on and she would in a way not saying to me that I was anything she would always say to me she was proud of me every time she saw me every time we sent an email back and forth every time you know we and hearing that someone was proud of me besides my parents, I think, um, actually changed my life. And she inspired me to want to keep pushing and being more proud of myself and more proud and more proud. And, I mean, to this day, I still talk to her and she's beyond proud of me. And I'm beyond proud of me finally. And she's so happy like that I finally see the light that she always saw in me. And I think that she has been a crucial part of my life. Um, I mean, she told me the world was one for the taking, which is something that a student doesn't just tell uh uh, I mean a teacher doesn't just tell a student and she really changed my life and um yeah I'm going to become a teacher now I'm going to follow in her footsteps and it's pretty crazy but yeah no I think she was a really big part of it I mean like I, she wasn't my teacher at the time and no one at the time knew what was going on but she always knew you know deep down I would always tell her things and she used to like someone I would confide in and still confide in her and yeah and I also want to shout out all my friends because they had no clue what was happening and um I went through very hard phases and yeah they've been there for me though and my last thing that I want to shout it is my mirror as crazy as this is gonna sound I would my mirror has been through more than anyone else has been through with me because I have cried so much in front of that mirror that I hated myself it is insane um it saw me break down it saw me hate myself it told me want to throw things at it it saw me want to crash it. it told me to call myself ugly it told me I was the worst person in the world it has heard everything negative that I've ever said about myself. And now it's changed. Um, when I look into my mirror, um, I say, hello, beautiful. I love you. Good morning. And those are the words that mean the most to me. When I stand in front of that mirror, I feel a sense of pride and I feel a sense of joy to just finally say, I love you to myself. I think in general for everyone, it is very important to remind yourself every day that you love yourself and that you're beautiful because you are um so that was my biggest breakthrough my biggest breakthrough was my mirror so to this day if you ask me about anything I will tell you my mirror is something that's very important to me because it has been there for me through my hardest time and it's now there for me through my happiest times and yeah I said um I want to do a lot more with the PCOS community I'm looking into the future of getting more involved in a lot of ways as many ways as possible because as you know this is something that's very dear to my heart and I never want anyone to feel alone on the journey because you're not alone on the journey you know, there's other people who are fighting too, and I didn't know it at the time, and it was horrible, but I want you to know that there's people here for you, there's people rooting you on, there's people who believe you're beautiful, and you are beautiful, and never forget that. And yeah, I'm hoping to show and share more of my making a difference in the PCOS community with you in the future, and yeah, I hope everyone has a great night, I hope you had a great holiday season, and have a good day.
Good night, whatever it's called. <laughs> Have a good week, too.